when you introduce yourself to new people, how do you describe what you do for a living? Uh, it's really weird, <laughs> like, like when, when people call me a YouTuber, it sounds funny to me. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I often s say it now, like YouTuber, but a mus musician, like, yeah. I, I like emphasize the musician part, but I am a YouTuber and that's what I am. But uh, yeah, I'm a bit more comfortable with the term than I was maybe a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, it's still it's still a funny thing to say. I think. Yeah. Do they um, immediately think that when you say musician, do they do they then ask you what you play? And obviously, you play basically everything. So yeah, uh, I've always considered myself like a a vocalist. So that's what I that's mm -hmm. what I say. But. Uh, Usually there's someone else in the room or something that says, oh, he, he plays everything. But I, <laughs> but I try like to tone it down. Like, yeah, I, I just I just like to work by myself and do everything by myself. So, yeah, you really do do everything by yourself. Um, can you take me through a normal week when you just start fresh without um, any video, any audio, and you get maybe a song suggestion from a YouTube comment? And then you, I know that you try and find a riff uh, or something that can make the song sound heavy um, and then just lead us through the process yeah. to the Friday, I just did a video series on point. it also, like day by day, how, how I usually work. Like the Monday is hopefully I've, I've already found a song that I have on my list or sometimes I just go searching for something and then just basically start to record like the the main rhythm stuff of songs it's usually or, or it's always like guitar that i start with and and track like the basics of the song and then try to like move things around and find like um like a demo version of it and then like then usually the next day i go for the vocals and start adding mm -hmm. stuff maybe solos and and all this and by the third day, I'm usually starting to like mix it down and add a lot of details on it. Um, and then I'm, yeah, usually I'm, I finish the song on the third day and then I start shooting the video on, on the Thursday. And yeah, I edit that and usually get it done in a day. And then I have the Friday to maybe do other stuff like another type of video or starting on a new song so hopefully i can go on vacation once in a while <laughs> it's always very impressive and um if the listeners don't already know uh, we've collaborated on one of those videos well three videos in total but um one being an actual metal cover of sultans of swing yeah. which was okay it did did all right yeah um, it's definitely one of my <laughs> one of my most viewed videos i'm very proud of that video and um even my parents they watch it every so often just to make <laughs> themselves happy which i think is really sweet so um that's what i like about your stuff like usually the metal genre um is it's kind of limited to a certain type of demographic and yet your videos are so entertaining and imaginative and witty um, as well as being like beautifully produced. Uh, every track uh, obviously goes up on Spotify and iTunes and um, up on your Patreon page too. Um, and it's a fully produced thing. So yeah, just working on that was very exciting for me. Um, but then also doing something different like the Tracy Chapman cover where we were just two acoustic guitars in your studio, again, produced really nicely. Mm your fans also liked that um so is there anything are you ever surprised by what yeah, does well um, and what doesn't do well uh, i've stopped a long time ago to try to make like viral videos i just like i just do what i want really and i have no idea like what what does better than another video because as a musician you do stuff maybe technical stuff or fancy things to show off and i found out that those videos mostly don't 
do as good as the more simple songs because for the general public they don't care about you playing in seven eights or <laughs> whatever it's mm -hmm. like they just want the groove of the song so but yeah that's maybe what i uh because I, i'm not <laughs> a, like a very uh technical shredder type of guy either and in in some ways i'm i'm happy that i'm not because if i was then i would maybe try to show off more like do crazy guitar playing but uh yeah for for general people i don't think they they care about that because a lot of my fans aren't necessarily musicians they're parents or people in the military or people who like to work out or yeah it's mm -hmm. uh, it's mostly those type of people that like send me mails and stuff and tell me stories like experiences that I had from my songs which still like is amazing for me to hear because I'm I'm doing metal covers on YouTube and and uh, it had it has helped a lot of people in strange ways <laughs> so yeah it's just really cool because because your art form is so consistent like you literally upload every Friday can have you ever taken a Friday off um, it, since you started uploading yeah probably i think once many years ago like three three years ago maybe i was just thinking about it like oh my God. yeah <laughs> it's pretty i've been pretty consistent <laughs> like yeah it's been every friday so but uh, i'll see next year when we have to move and maybe do some more live shows and stuff i think maybe i have to skip one or two during mm -hmm. uh, spring <laughs> so yeah we have to see well it's um yeah, it's very impressive, and uh, I I do understand how hard it is to keep it going. But do you find um, having that consistency keeps you driven to keep uploading, or is it the idea of just you know continuing to be a full time musician and producer, um, or is it the stories? Like, did did the sort of inspiration for the songs change every so often? Yeah, it's definitely a combination of of everything. I've, I've sort of like set my pride in in doing it that consistent. So that's definitely a a drive and inspiration that I have that I need to put it out every Friday. Especially if like fellow YouTubers or musicians are like, Man, I can't believe how you you're doing it like that consistent. Then I was like, believe it, because I'm gonna do it more than <laughs> Then I get really like fired up, like yeah, I'm gonna do it. So, but yeah, it's it's different inspirations. Like sometimes I'm I'm really into like the mixing, and sometimes I am really into the crazy ideas in the songs, like instrumentations, or I get something funny, new instrument or something. Or sometimes I'm really into like the video thing. I have an ID there, so. But I think the most um, satisfying thing is is um, when when you're finished with the whole thing, like on the Friday or the Thursday, like man, all, all the hours I put in on all the details on everything has come together to make this almost a physical product. It's not physical, but it's still like a really a statement in sound and video. Like, I don't think I'm the best at either sound or video, but it's it's really satisfying to see the whole thing come together and, and knowing all the little details that went into it and and people uh, giving you great feedback for it. So, yeah, it's definitely inspirational. I really like that statement of, uh, of you know, statement of sound and video. That's quite impressive. And I like that you're still hungry to keep uploading and i i think maybe that's something that you know content creators at your level have to have there has to be this sort of fire burning to keep uploading every week and also when people say oh i don't know how you do it or you'll probably never keep it up yeah. all those sorts of things just sort of like chip away i'm still surprised that i have the drive because <laughs> i can see like uh, maybe other YouTubers also, they come to a certain level where they put a lot of work in their videos or whatever they do, and they sort of back it off, and you can see that they don't put in 
the hours anymore. And mm, I, I don't want to do that. Like I've set myself mm. my standard of, of doing it. So I definitely don't want to cheat that in any way. I want to just, I'm either going to keep it like that or do something completely different or, or not do it at all. I, I need to, um, yeah, I need to keep it at this level that I'm I'm doing it at. I'm not I'm not gonna make like uh, a videos with only one video angle mm -hmm. or make songs that are thirty seconds or just live stuff or. And I I really like the whole producing side and I'm all about the details anyway. So, but the day I'm not inspired anymore is the day that I'm gonna. I'm not going to do it anymore because I, I can't, you can't work like that if you don't burn for it because it's so, in a way, a tedious way to work, I think. But for me, it's the best. Mm. And for many musicians or video folks will know that they don't think about the hours that go into it or the level of fine tweaking. It's... It's all about the passion of, of doing it. Yeah. Well, that's a perfect answer, actually. <laughs> it's something just a sort of otherworldly to actually be a musician. You know, as you know, growing up, I don't know whether you faced it either. And, and I kind of want to get onto sort of YouTube criticism too and comments and stuff. But um, when it comes to people thinking about uh, musicians making a living, it's kind of unfathomable to some um, yeah. especially in this day and age when you know record labels it's just a different environment and so many different things are happening and so many different streams of income are, are now available because of the internet but um, it's sort of quite nice and inspirational to someone like me to see you you know even you've been playing guitar for however long you've been producing and singing and still be hungry um, even after all your successes so far, including being featured in the Wall Street Journal, which is insanely <laughs> incredible. I'm so <laughs> proud of you. Um, how, do, how did that come about? Did they just uh, drop you an email and say, hey, we want to yeah, talk about you? Yeah, because they have writers. So it's one of the guys who he contacted me first and then he probably sold it into them, the ID. And, uh, and then we took it from there. Uh -huh. So he was really like... I want to get all your old uh, bosses and uh, yeah, he talked to a lot of people like he was really thorough or what what do you call it? So yeah, we spent uh, a couple of weeks like back and forth talking about it and and it made that like the front page of the paper like I think he's going to send it over. It's just really crazy to see like <laughs> Donald Trump and world politics and like m YouTube metal guy. Like on the, f oh, it's crazy. It's like <laughs> it, it's uh, what what did I say? It's like bucket list things that I never even th thought about. Like it never entered my mind that uh, like I was gonna be in the Wall Street Journal. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a cool thing to have done. Very very cool. Um, so when it comes to sort of criticism in comments, do you have any? advice for people who are starting out and maybe are uh, getting a bit of an audience do you listen to any of the noise do you just sort of avoid anything good and actually anything bad and just try and just focus on the next video yeah it's it's a hard uh, thing I, I've been very lucky like I see in my comments too there's not a lot of trolling or what do you call it mm. but um, but I learned pretty quickly that I don't uh, I don't get involved if there's like like very angry people or very like hostile comments because then it, it it's got gonna start like a shitstorm <laughs> if I get involved <laughs> there and then everyone's yeah. just going crazy so yeah I, I I just try to keep to avoid it really and uh, just focus on on doing my thing of course if there's con constructive critis criticism then uh, mm -hmm. then it's fine like that's that's good but uh yeah like trolling or yeah i i, I don't really care it's like i i do what i do and uh, 
I am in a lucky position because um, I don't have to answer to anyone or anything really. So I just I found like my formula and I'm I'm just doing that so people can say whatever they want and uh, I've been pretty successful. So uh, there's not a lot you can say about you can say a lot about my my face in my videos or you don't like the songs but uh but uh, you can't deny that a lot of people are watching it and liking it so yeah it's it's good exactly i think that's very powerful to hear and um yeah for any anyone starting out when they're or they're you know people are worried about starting because they're going to possibly face some people that just aren't going to like it because they could potentially reach, you know, millions and millions of people and you can't please everyone. So, yeah, uh, yeah I definitely. That's, that's but I think because I'm uh, because I'm older, too, I, I don't know if if I was in my 20s or even younger, then probably I would care more about that. Um, mm. But I think like being being through all all the not this kind of stuff but like music and just uh, yeah just being older i think I, I have no like barriers when it comes to sharing my life on youtube that's that's my wife have to stop me if i'm going like i can show everything can i show this on youtube can i take a picture of this it's like um don't put that out on <laughs> on instagram or whatever but uh, yeah that's good someone holding me back but uh, yeah. i'm not going to put out like yeah stupid stuff or like compromising stuff but uh but still i have no i don't i don't think about it really i just take it as it comes and people can uh, say what they want I, i've never cared really what people uh, say anyway i think especially if you come from like a background where you listen to uh, mm -hmm maybe kind of niche music like metal music you're kind of like an outsider in a way anyway from the norm so i'm kind of used to being the guy that listens to people screaming or <laughs> <whatever>. <laughs> i don't know <laughs> but yeah let's get on to something new that you started doing this year i think you had your first show may in may this year in Stavanger, in, in yeah. Norway. Um, how yes. has that gone? I have seen footage from the shows and the shows have looked insane. So congratulations on how many people are turning out. And it's just so impressive. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's been it's been amazing. I think every show we've done has sold out. Yeah, we're doing UK now next week and both of them have sold out. First time we're going there and... But the most crazy thing we played the the Nova Rock Festival in Austria, and we pr played the small stage or the Red Bull stage, which which isn't the small stage, <laughs> but uh, it's the smallest on the festival, which is a huge festival. And and they the organizers said they never seen that many people on that stage before. <laughs> it was just insane, like amount of people. And yeah, they booked us like for the main stage, like late night act for next year like i think we're playing after uh, a huge band so yeah it's it's been <laughs> it's been over all expectation because for me also sitting here in up in the mountains in, <laughs> of norway and and seeing numbers on the screen and uh, i know it's a lot of people but when when i go out to like the the rock festival or something then there's f faces on those numbers and uh, yeah it's a lot of people uh, that know who I am, so that's it's it's fun. Like I'm currently I'm a rock star when I'm out playing, but uh, I can still uh, I have like the perfect mm -hmm. level of uh, f fame because I'm, I'm I'm not I'm not wanting to be a rock star or be f YouTube celebrity. That's not my goal. I just like to play music. But uh, but of course it's fun to stand on the stage and a lot of people. Will, like it and make noise so yeah it's uh it's been incredible tell me about the band setup i have yeah i have ruby i'm a southern guitar who's like a incredible guitar player from brighton 
and the drummer Trulls from Circus Maximus, a Norwegian prog metal band, which is kind of worldwide known, and he's an incredible musician. He's better than me on guitar, and he can sing like crazy. He's just like so multi talented. And uh, on bass, uh, Eric, uh, who I played a lot with in bands during the times, and he's from the same place as me. So uh, the most important thing for me with the whole band thing was to have uh, people who are cool. Like I played in bands where not where there's been crashes of personalities, and that's not fun at all. So definitely have have mm-hmm. cool people. Uh, so I feel we have the perfect like the perfect setting now with this sound guy and manager and everything is just awesome and gear wise we we play we have a real simple setup we play through like uh, the helix from line six straight into the pa both me and rabia so we have no amplifiers or bass uh, amplifiers on stage everything is going directly to the mixer and uh yeah and of course, we use uh, the Shure wireless packs for in ears and and everything because we use a lot of uh, backing tracks uh, in our ears. Like I have a lot of different like sounds in my song that we can't do live, so we need to back it up. And I've never used in ears uh, until we started the band and. Uh, it's just been a great thing for me. It really like saves my voice too, because especially when when singing metal and you're playing venues and trying to scream over like the insane decibel thing on the stage. But now when everything's locked in your ear, you don't have to like crush your voice trying to scream on top of everything. So yeah, it's just uh, it's just worked really good for us i'm so happy to hear that um this year was the first time i ever started to use in-ear monitors too on stage and obviously not having anything come through monitors uh, one saves space um but also it means that the sound engineer can do a better job because there's not as much noise coming back you know off microphones or anything i know you don't have have many microphones on stage because of uh using the helix but yeah it's um i bet the sound is uh very impressive and yeah, you're using the 846s as well, which are beautiful in-ear monitors. Like, I'm not even saying that just because this is a short podcast. So I just yeah, <laughs> I, I'm I'm really surprised, <laughs> like, with beautiful. the bass in them. It's like, I can't believe how mm-hmm. these small things can produce that amount of force in my ear. Like, I could have, like, sub, like, mm-hmm. exploding my head if I want. But, yeah, sure, sure has been really cool. Also, they sent over the the wireless um, uh, mic that I'm going to test out for the first time next week on the UK shows because I want to be able to go out in the um, crowd yeah. with the mic. My setup live is that I have one mic, which is a normal so- sounding mic, mic, and one with a radio effect. So I'm switching, like like this, Mm -hmm. to the agony of our sound guy because they're sort of facing each other. (laughs) So, (laughs) but now, yeah, now I'm gonna, I'm gonna try the, because I have tried it for, before on big festivals, like the, the wireless mic stuff. And yeah, I really liked it. So yeah, I'm excited to try it out because everything has been sent to our sound guy in, in the UK. So I haven't really, I haven't seen like the wireless stuff or the mic yet. So I'm excited mm-hmm. for next week to go and just see the whole setup and, and try everything out. Uh, I don't want to tour too much. Like I want to try, I've never tried like the tour bus thing. So I want to try that o- almost mostly because I just want to try the tour bus thing for a couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. But uh but with the whole, uh, with my family, I want to be home and and uh, I like working alone also. But it's it's super fun to go out and hang with the band and play awesome shows. And they're my good friends also. So uh, I'm kind of a loner sitting at home, which I like. But I also need sometimes to get out and just be social and, and do other stuff. So it's a great, a great combination to to be able to do that and not like most bands would rely on touring relentlessly and 
and all this stuff i'm like the total opposite for me it's uh, financially better to stay at home uh, i definitely didn't start the band to to make a profit because i'm probably if i'm going to tour a lot then i'm probably mm. going to earn less than i'm doing sitting here so yeah it's just good good times really yeah it sounds like the best of both worlds just being able to yeah, yeah i i've done a, a little bit of touring but i haven't done the tour bus thing either and yeah it's it sounds fun for a few weeks but for years and years and years on end and especially when you do have a family and you will also i guess have your new studio next year right yeah uh it's it's been a long process like we're building a new house and studio so it looks like it's going to be maybe start of april or something so yeah mm -hmm. it, it's starting to look like a house now and uh uh, yeah it's a lot of meetings and a lot of stuff going on but and I, I i'm i'm a kind of guy who lives in the moment i can't really comprehend when it's happening uh i, I can't believe it until i stand there because yeah. it's it's gonna be it's gonna be awesome <laughs> it's gonna be like a, fucking, a new house and <laughs> uh, uh, three times as big studio and yeah it's just a dream come through like all because of youtube so yeah i'm definitely in a, a very lucky position well thank you so much for doing the signal path podcast yeah thank you for having me that was fun uh, my pleasure it was so fun to catch up as well yeah if i anyone watching this video i'm i'm looking down because mary is down here so it's not like i'm falling <laughs> I'm asleep <the> like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we we both have our laptops down, or you have your yeah. phone, um, and we are doing this over uh, Facebook Messenger, which is the powers of the internet. I'm very, um, yeah, I'm very in awe of how uh, musicians' careers can change so rapidly because of technology, like all the things that you're able to do live now because of the Helix, um, because of in-ear monitors, and just yeah, it just kind of sounds like um, you're in the right century. Yeah. If you know what I mean, <laughs> in the right decade, in the right century, um, to become a rock star in your own way and controlled in your own environment. It's very, very cool. So good luck with everything. Obviously, in the YouTube video of this podcast, everything will be linked in the description and obviously a link to Leo's thank channel. You. But thank you.